In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Today remember John Shermer as we celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds to enter more worthily into them by first acknowledging and confessing our sins. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgave the sinner. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. James. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you've seen the purpose of the Lord, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no that you may not incur condemnation. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink, because you belong to Christ, 
Amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Or excuse me. That was yesterday. Sounded familiar. Jesus came into the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. The Pharisees approached him and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in the Gospel, we have this, what sometimes can be called a difficult teaching about divorce um, and about adultery. And Jesus is very clear on this point. And sometimes I know this is, is kind of a difficult issue uh, when people deal with divorce to have this, this very clear teaching. But Jesus is unambiguous about this, the explanation about marriage, about marriage being a lifelong commitment. And it is something when preparing couples for marriage, I really want to impress upon them. So it's a very serious thing. So why would this be so important to Jesus? Here's the question I ask today. Um, this is all said within the context of a part of Mark's gospel in which he's starting to talk about the more difficult things. He's speaking about his own coming passion and death. Um, he's also then putting the challenge in front of other people really to be completely committed to their faith, that it, to follow Jesus means a complete and total commitment. So this teaching falls in line with this, this turn where Jesus is really calling us to, very, to be very serious about our commitment, our commitment to the Lord, and even in marriage, our commitment to one another. Um, there is also, I think, a sense in which we also have a covenant here, a covenant between a husband and wife, and that's one of the terms we use when describing marriage, and this is not unlike the covenant that exists between God and mankind. So when the Lord took the people of Israel, he entered a covenant with them, I will be your God, you will be my people, and so this is akin to, I will be your husband, you will be my wife. And so there's a bond that is created, a special relationship. Um, and because that bond endures, the Lord doesn't give up on us. And so therefore also in marriage, they shouldn't give up on one another. So it's a relationship of love. And as the Lord never stops loving us, this is the call for husbands and wives to continue to love one another. There's even a little more to it than that, because we also speak not just simply of a covenant, but we also say that there is a vow. You, you hear people say the term marriage vow. They, they exchanged their vows. They renewed their vows. And a vow is a very serious thing. Maybe nowadays, maybe it doesn't seem so serious. I wonder if people take a, a vow or they, they swear an oath. Um, they put their hand on the Bible. Does anyone put their hand on the Bible anymore? I don't know if they do. They just, just hold your hand up. And I guess I'm not, I'm not even sure we use a Bible anymore when people swear an oath to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But when we swear an oath or when we make a vow, we're invoking the name of the Lord. To use language from the, the Old Testament, sometimes people would say, as the Lord lives, I shall do this or that. In other words, I'm not just promising you. I'm promising you on, by the Lord, by the Lord himself, I promise you. So that way, if a person were to break that vow, it is to deny that the Lord lives. It is, in fact, to call upon the name of the Lord, and then to break that word itself is actually blasphemy. So we're, we're, we're forsaking the name of the Lord. Um, if any of you were Harry Potter fans, I might describe this as an unbreakable vow. But I don't think we have many Harry Potter fans here, so I'm not going to use the term unbreakable vow, but that would be the same. It's the same sense of it's something that's so solemn that it, in fact, cannot be undone, but that's how, that's how important it is. So the fact that it's a vow is another reason to take this seriously. But I'll give you even, more, even one more reason why I think this is so important. 
because not only do we have this uh, bond between the, the man and the woman, the husband and the wife, um, that they are bound together, but they also become one flesh. And this is spoken of as a spiritual reality, a special bond that is created, but that unites the two into one flesh, and obviously in a physical sense, um, in the marital act. But there's also a sense of being bound together. And when we think about what Jesus Christ did for us, as he enters as our saviors, he becomes our bridegroom, the bridegroom to the church, which is his bride. Um, he also took upon himself human flesh. And no more can we divide the two who have become one flesh, and the husband and the wife, any more than we could divide Jesus Christ, who is God and who is man. Um, Jesus has two natures that have been united into one person. And there is no separating that. Nor would we want to, nor would Jesus want to. So he has bound himself to us um, in an irrevocable way. And it's really a remarkable thing to consider. And that's, I think, why this is such a serious thing. So it's a difficult teaching, and it's not always easy to accept because we do um, see that sometimes marriages do fall apart. And divorce is a reality that we experience um, in our world. And yet it's not what was meant to be. And that's something that we always hold up. So um, thinking about the fidelity of the Lord to us, let us be faithful to him. And also we pray for husbands and wives that they may be faithful to one another. We stand now to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God that we may always be faithful to the Lord who is faithful to us even to the end. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord might help husbands and wives to persevere in their commitment to one another. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the discernment of all couples who are preparing for marriage that the Lord might bless them during this time um, and that they might come to a greater knowledge of themselves and the commitment that they are to undertake. We pray to the Lord. We pray that all fathers and mothers might be good examples to their children, that the Lord might bless them in their children. We pray to the Lord. Let us remember all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Shermer family for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. And for the protection of our religious liberties and for peace throughout the world, let us pray. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Louis's assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I think in a special way uh, we call upon Mary, who is the Queen of Peace, um, especially to pray for peace throughout the world, and so let us call upon her intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.